we get to assess the best business models from around the world. And we wanna bring that back to you guys. And there were some very interesting trends that are happening. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna talk about some of the trends that are happening. And then we had this incredible keynote speaker mm. um, on cultures and you're gonna talk about that, mm -hmm. correct? I am, I'm also gonna like pipe in while you're talking. All right. Cause All right. that's what I do when you talk. <laughs> It's true, it's true. Uh, that's a healthy relationship, right? Uh, okay, so one of the things that, that we're talking about enormously, and we addressed it a couple weeks ago too, is the new business models that are coming out there. Redfin, who is it new? Um, and Purple Bricks and the concept of having discounted models to consumers is nothing new as well. But now we have people with millions and millions of dollars and brokerages of millions of dollars who can uh, uh, promote it out to the clients. And so when we're looking at that, uh, we need to assess who the, these people are going after. And this was a, a really big aha for me. But the people that are being targeted by these business models are consumers who are unattached. These are people that don't have a current relationship with the realtor. They want the people to go to their website, find a listing, make an inquiry, and then go from there. But people that have relationships um, with a realtor already and understand these models, and even this guaranteed sold thing that we were talking about earlier, is targeting people that don't have previous relationships. Yeah. And you need to make sure that your relationship with consumers is rock solid, that you are the one um, who is providing the information and you are the one that they trust because that is 90% of the time the way the consumers choose who they work with. So if you haven't touched base with everyone in your database, if you don't have a database, if you're not um, you know, controlling the conversation on Facebook and providing that expert information, inviting people out to this Best My Nest program and things like that. They'll be picked off. That's right. Then they'll be unattached, even if they might have bought from you five years ago, or you might have you know, dinner with them five years ago, they are unattached and it's time for you to rekindle that. Yeah, and they're definitely not sending you referral business, let alone their own business. Yeah, exactly. At that point, right? I mean, the thing, one of the things I love about this Best My Nest class coming up is what a nice thing to call someone and say, let's have a bit of a girls' night, free class on me. Do you know anybody that wants to come out? And then suddenly you get to be with a friend that maybe you helped buy or sell a house for three years ago with two of her friends. Yeah. Right, like just well, and then you got you can like also you have like use these opportunities, right? And you're adding so much value, and then their house is going to be beautiful, and they're going to be happy, and they're not going to have too many old towels in their closet, which is so much mental anxiety when you have too many old towels that you feel bad about throwing out. Like you are saving lives. It's very specific. It's because I currently have <laughs> way too many old towels, and every time I open my linen closet, I throw up in my mouth a little bit. <laughs> so I get it. I don't mind our towels. Um, another thing that's happening out there is these companies like Zillow, um, Purple Bricks, and Redfin. I don't want and I don't want to necessarily don't lump Zillow in all, with all of them in there. And no. the reason is Zillow partners with realtors, whereas Redfin and, and Purple Bricks is trying to eliminate them from the transaction. Yes. Um, so so two different things. Um, however, all of these people are focusing on the consumer experience. And what I see realtors do very often is they just want it to be like the good old days. They want everything, like it would just be better if these people just didn't go away. I don't want to change, I don't want to adapt. I just want to have people accept my services for what they are. So here's my question. These companies are focusing on the consumer experience. When is the last time you did an upgrade to your consumer experience? When's the last time you looked at the marketing plan that you're doing for listings and added in the 3D imaging, added in more videos, and you upgraded the level of service you provide? When's the last time you upgraded your website, the service experience you're offering your consumers, uh, made sure, making sure everything is mobile friendly? When's the last time you made those changes in your business? You can't just stay the same forever. No. Um, like these, these, anything if you want to use the word disruption, which I hate because a lot of these models have actually been around before, there's just more advertising dollars being put into them now. Um, when you see that happen, you need to adapt and you need to adjust. It's like Apple, it's like you know any oil company, in order for the oil companies to survive, they had to change the efficiencies that they had to, to get oil out of the ground cheaper because mm -hmm. the price has changed. Innovation actually helped you know, the oil companies stay alive, especially in the recent downturns. In your business as well, you need to change, evolve, and my suggestion to you is that you follow the lead of some of these new business models and focus on the consumer experience. Upgrade your consumer experience on the listing side and on the buying side. 
I think too that you need to, and this is something that I'm, I'm just going to mention that we've learned that other brokerages are doing as well. But I, I know that you just said change, change or upgrade on the buying or selling side. But a lot of these brand new business models, like the Redfin or the Purple Bricks or the, you know, you know, Comfrey was bought out. But just the in general, like that, just transaction or even the guaranteed stole stuff. Like you're just trying to find new consumers. It's just about buying or selling. That's it. Where a lot of the new brokerage models are saying, how can we be your one-stop shop for your entire home ownership experience? Right. So we're seeing a lot of brokerages start in-house mortgage companies, property management divisions, um, creating their own moving companies. We There was one brokerage who has their own snow removal company yeah. now just because they're saying, we need, we don't want to just compete on buying and selling. There's a lot of brokerages now that it's a one-stop, do this, buy your home, we'll never talk to you again. But as far as controlling that narrative goes, how can you control the consumer experience enough to make sure that somebody is getting an unreal one-stop shop where everything they need is taken care of, they trust it, they're not on the phone a hundred times, and there's one person for everything they need, and that's you, and that's what brokers are trying to do. So even from that customer experience side, it's not just about buying or selling, because there are a lot of people that can do that. But one of the benefits of being with a company like CIR is you can offer them so much more than just buying or selling, and that is also what's going to keep them yeah, attached. Yeah, our, our focus on home ownership, with uh, that's the whole reason Best Buy Nest came about. And yeah. you guys can just adopt that like it's your own. Yeah. Um, another piece that's happening, and if not many people in Canada are familiar with it right now, um, it will come eventually, but this company called Compass. And what Compass is doing is they've again raised um, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars and they're trying to acquire market share by basically buying real estate brokerages and things like that. But they're trying to create um, this technology platform. And one of the things that they're doing is they, they develop these technologies and they're trying to say, oh, we invented real estate technology. It's like we're changing the landscape. Whereas these services that are offering already exist in many capacities. It's nothing new. They're just telling but the story better. They're telling the story better. They're controlling the narrative with your clients. If you are concerned about your clients and, and the guaranteed sold programs, then you need to be controlling the narrative with your client. You need to understand it. Um, you need to be talking about what you bring to the table and what's happening there and what consumers should be looking for in a real estate transaction. Social media has given a platform to people like never before that uh, people can share and control the narrative with your clients. We talked about this in the past. We say, what do you want people to know about you? And let me ask you this, what do you want people to know about the real estate experience? What do you want people to know about your services? And you need to be out there talking about it posting about it, sending you part of your email marketing, part of your farming campaigns, um, you know, the, the, what's on your website, the different links they can click through, all need to be yeah. about you controlling the narrative um, for what's out there and what your clients are defining value based off of. Also too, these, when I think of the advertising budgets, and I'm, I'm, I'm part of my job is in advertising, so I get it, but they have so much money and what they are promoting is, you know, Compass themselves, Redfin themselves, Zillow themselves. As much as you should be promoting yourselves, we have as a brokerage so many resources. And if you follow us on Instagram or our Best My Nest page or our Facebook page, the amount of content that we have as a brokerage, home ownership articles and videos, how-to tips, um, you know, celebrating some of the achievements that we've had, interesting things going on in the communities, the market stats that we're posting, it's also very important to showcase and elevate the brokerage that you are with so that people are seeing more Sierra Realty and less of Purple Bricks's $3 million or however much they're putting in there as well, right? So there's your own advertising, but then there's also the advertising of the brokerage that you can make yourself look much, 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 much bigger with. So please do use the stuff that we're giving you because we only create what we have because we know that it elevates CIR's brand and the public's opinion as you being part of with CIR, the better they think of the brokerage is only going to help you guys too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that's and it's just impossible to create all the content yourselves if you're like, yeah. you know, what do I share? What do I do? You don't have to look very far because yeah. we make it all available to you. Check our feeds, share it out. Yeah. Uh, we're trying to be uh, very consumer focused with that as well. Yeah. Um, another thing, just on a, a, another piece, uh, this was just a shocking fact to me. Uh, this was shared. This is U.S. again, but Canada mirrors the U.S. in terms of um, their economies and uh, different pieces. So uh, this said that the average net worth of a renter 
over 65 years or older is $6,000. And the average net worth of a homeowner is around $300,000. So if you want to talk about the home ownership experience and about why people should get in as homeowners, and you can go through the whole process about why that is, because you know it's forced savings, maybe the um, maybe they still have to pay for repairs and things like that, but forced savings into a house over the long term leads to that net worth. And so homeowners automatically get that benefit of that. So if you want to convince people or chat with people and compel them That's to consider number. home ownership, that is a stat to look and at. And maybe if one of our managers is online right now, just to, if you could type that into the chat, just so people can have it, because that's yeah. a good one. So um, renters, yeah, go ahead, please. I'll just repeat it, um, if, if Steve or someone's online. So the average net worth of a renter over 65 is $6,000. And the average net worth of a homeowner is over three hundred thousand dollars. That yeah. might be a good copy paste. Yeah. yeah, into something. That's a good. That's a good one. Yeah, if you do nothing else for your retirement, become a homeowner early on in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Um, the other thing that we want to mention, it's not an industry trend. It was just an interesting book that we want to refer you guys to because Calgary, um, Central Southern Alberta, read your lectures. We are all very multicultural. Um, our staff is multicultural. Our management team is quite multicultural. Just and it's interesting because you think, you know, yeah, I even think of our management team right now. It's like, well, you know, we're predominantly Caucasian, but depending on where you are in the world, we all Canada, U.S., Paris, France, yep. Netherlands, Argentina. We may all look the same, but we communicate so unbelie unbelievably differently. Um, but there was a book that was written. It's called The Culture Map. Uh, the Culture Map, and it is written by Aaron Meyer. And the entire book looks at where we were born and how we grew up and the people we grew up around and how and the context that we communicate within. And it was absolutely mind-blowing. And I think that all of you should read this book and do a bit of a book club with it because it will make a big difference when you are negotiating, building relationships, resolving conflict, trying to influence any of your clients or other realtors that you're working with. And basically, like to, to kind of sum, up, to sum it up, it looks at eight, well, like, task-based task versus relationship-based as far as our process for how we get things done. So task-based being how quick are you to get to the end result and is the end result kind of the most important part is the productivity, the efficiency, is that the most important part? Or is the relationship building, the emotions, the empathy, is that the biggest part of it? And every single culture fits on a totally different scale, depending on where this is. And depending on where you are in that, it, it affects a whole bunch of different things. So she says, just and I'll kind of quickly read them, but then you should get the book because I know it'll help your business for sure, that there's eight scales um, and it's on a continuum between two ends, which are diametric, diametric opposites. And it's so the first one is communicating. So communicating, are they low context? So very simple, very clear, you know, this is the instruction. I'm gonna spell it out for you. Say exactly what I'm I mean. gonna put it in an email yeah. and then I'm gonna call you and repeat what's in the email. And then I'm gonna send you a follow-up email to make sure that you remembered it. Or on the other side, which is very high context, which means the relationship is so high or you share enough of, enough of a group value that you don't spell it out, you don't say much, there's a few words and you just assume that somebody's gonna understand what you're talking about. There are over 50% of the cultures in the world that are on the low context side and 50% that are on the high context side, which means that some people think that if you're spelling something out to them, you think they're an idiot. Yep. And they hate you, and they yep. don't like your point form, very clear language, and it's very North American it's to very, be spelling everything out for people. Oh, totally. Yeah. We're, we're on the other end. It's like you know, let's get to know each other a little bit, so you just understand who we are enough that you don't have to say all of those things because we feel like you should just get it. Totally. Um, evaluating. So when you are giving feedback, do are you direct about it? or are you very indirect about it? And which cultures like direct feedback and which cultures do not like direct feedback? Um, are people like to be treated as egalitarian? So every all of us are on the same level and that's how we're gonna have this conversation. Or from a leadership perspective, because some people will say, you know, I'm hiring you as a realtor, I want you to be the expert. So I want you to have some leadership and I want you to speak to me like an expert. Where other cultures will say, I've hired you servant. Like, yeah. I am I am your boss, right? Like, you need to answer my questions and I'm going to be controlling of this. And depending on which way you treat that person, um, it'll go well or it won't. 
Decision making, are decisions making as a group or are they made top down? Trusting, do people trust on how well they know each other or how well they work together? So that's a very different context as well. Are you trusting based off, off of your collegial or your social dimensions? Disagreeing, are, di are disagreements tackled directly or do people prefer to avoid confrontations? There are a lot of cultures that will avoid confrontations among absolutely anything else that, that could happen to them. So even if something is completely breaking down in your real estate, in your real estate communication or if something going, is going bad in a deal, they would rather not say a single word about it just because it is not in their culture to bring up that something is going wrong. So if you're working with someone, this book will offer a lot of strategies on how to bring that up and to get them feel comfortable about saying something that they think you're doing or a concern that they have. Scheduling, do they perceive time as absolute linear points or consider it a flexible range? This is a really big one. What an hour means to you might mean 24 hours to somebody else. Um, and the last one is persuading. Do people like to hear examples when they're trying to be influenced or, they, or do they want very detailed explanations with statistics and facts? So at the end of the day, all of this has to do with how you communicate with people. And like I said, this, is, this varies night and day between you know, Germany and France. And so it's not just a you know, India, China, Brazilian yeah. thing. It is all over the place. So get this book. I spoke a lot, but I was trying to be relatively fast. Um, and again, it is called The Culture Map by Aaron Meyer. Well, and I just, just to conclude on that, if you've ever been frustrated working with other cultures, which we have, and it's important to note that those other cultures are probably equally as frustrated working with us, uh, that you need to understand this. And we all know the little things about feng shui or the number fours versus the number eights and things like that. And those are all very specific pieces within there. Um, overall though, how people communicate, how the relationships and how the, um, the, the, the relationship as a business uh, you know, service provider is, goes overall and being a trusted expert, understanding these and doing business with people, understanding the overall sort of scientific um, proof uh, with the research that goes into this, makes a world of difference. So highly, highly recommend it. Work, it's, it's called The Culture Map by Aaron Meyer. By the end of the segment, I sat back and felt so bad yeah. about the way that I've communicated yep. with some people, totally. just instantly thinking like, I gave, I gave this person no space. They probably thought I was being totally disrespectful. I never said words that would have given you confidence to speak out in a situation like I... We just walk around being offended. Yeah, so anyways, just defending people. Really it's like been book. bad. So anyways, that, yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so we're going to be right back talking about uh, growing your referral and relocation business.